back here on the home front markets place to open for trade this hump day. And we have with us live in studio, June Tarobago from ADR Asset Management. Now, June, a bit of a flattish day uh, we saw yesterday. But then again, now we've got all of these bleak, let's say, sentiment coming out from Davos. Also, some breakdowns in terms of the U.S. trade war with China. Um, and you can see all across the board a sea of red. How is that going to be coloring our sentiment this Wednesday here? Uh, it probably will, will add to the, the pressure, but we consider the pressure as merely uh, uh, people taking profit. Because mm. yes, while, while the, 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 the numbers are, are all in red for today, if you look at the year-to-date numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the markets are actually up pretty strong. Philippines is, is up 7.5%. Mm -hmm. uh, S&P 500, the U.S. stock market, is up 5%. Uh, Asia X Japan is 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 up as well. So uh, emerging market equities are doing pretty well this year, also. Okay. Um, so um, it's an excuse to take profit, I think. Mm -hmm. So for those short-term oriented investors, those traders, probably just taking advantage of mm -hmm. using this this recent news flow as a, a reason to take profit. But mm -hmm. we are unperturbed uh, with regard to our positive view on Philippine equities and emerging market equities uh, in general for, for 2019, at okay. the very least. So it's a bit of a mixed picture there, as you mentioned. I mean, on the one hand, these are things that are volatile every day, uh, the news coming out. But this print of the IMF in terms of global growth slowdown, does this not worry you in terms of fundamentals of the global economy? Um, we're not worried, actually. Um, our, our forecasts for global growth are still quite healthy. Uh, I'm not sure if that was uh, that 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 downgrade in global growth is tainted by uh, trade war mm -hmm. escalation assumptions. Correct. I'm not sure. I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't seen the report. But uh, as as for for my view, um, we're we're not worried about global growth. We think that there are still uh, pockets of growth around the world, mm -hmm. um, whether it be in the U.S. Uh, in emerging markets in particular, in the Philippines in particular. I think the story is a growth, and growth mm -hmm. is. Also, one of the reasons why um, the, the investment flows have been coming in mm -hmm. uh, quite strong. Um, so, yeah. still a good growth story for you there. Um, HSBC did also release a report saying that ASEAN stocks poised to grow in 2019, but they did flag a specific risk of liquidity here in the Philippines, especially with our tightening uh, monetary situation here. Are you concerned at all of corporates being able to tap liquidity to fund this growth that you're seeing? We're not. We're not concerned at all. Mm -hmm. um, we think that the the, the, the conditions in the financial markets are very healthy in the Philippines. Um, wh while we, we, we have flagged in the past that the, there are uh, ec macroeconomic imbalances that have to be uh, managed uh, for the Philippines. I'm talking about the twin deficits. Uh, the growth story for the country is, is, is strong uh, as ever. Um, GDP, we, we anticipate to grow by 6.5%. Mm -hmm. uh, corporate earnings, we think, will rebound in a very sharp way. We, we are actually see corporate earnings growing by 12%, mm -hmm. um, driven by um, property developers, driven by banks, mm -hmm. driven by consumer companies, driven by infrastructure mm -hmm. companies. So this, the growth story is as strong as it's ever been. And the fact that these, um, the macroeconomic concerns last year uh, which were uh, headwinds for the market, the reasons why, which weighed down heavily on, on Philippine equities in particular, um, are actually turning into positive uh, factors. Mm -hmm. uh, inflation, as everyone knows, is, mm -hmm. is, has eased and is, is uh, 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 slowing down. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, yeah, the other fiscal imbalances, we think, um, at this point are, 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 are quite... Manageable. On the uptrend. Yes. Now, you know, I love that optimism you've got there, June, and definitely markets will need a bit of that as we have opened a bit well below 8,000 levels. Actually, the PSEI opening this Wednesday at 7930.90. That is, of course, following all of these overnight sentiment across the board. And you're going to be seeing how holdings companies actually leading that decline, dragging the index down one and one tenth of a percent there. Now, uh, we'll check back in on those markets, but let's move on to your. Um, net foreign buying, and you did say that markets are uh, investors are flocking back into emerging markets. We did see the fourth straight day of net foreign buying, actually most of this year so far. What are keeping investors back or making them flock back in suddenly? In the Philippines, you mean? Yes. We're, well, they're flocking in uh, back into the Philippines because they're 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 
re-entering uh, emerging market equities in a, mm-hmm. in a big way. Uh, in, in past um, interviews, we've mentioned that um, uh, indications that the, the U.S. Fed uh, would pause mm-hmm. is, uh, has and is continuing to and will continue to trigger uh, a classic move back into risk assets. And, and when we talk okay. about risk assets, we, uh, in this particular case, I think it's, it's most pronounced in emerging market mm-hmm. equities. Um, over the past 14 weeks, if I, if I remember correctly, um, we saw about $31 billion uh, mm-hmm. inflows, in inflows into emerging market equities. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think it's a coincidence that we saw about $135 billion in outflows from developed market equities. Yeah. So, so that differential, uh, which is, I think, the biggest, uh, in, uh, huge differential, uh, quite clearly establishes that peop- that investors around the world are actually uh, reallocating resources mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from from developed market equities into emerging market equities for the reasons I, me- I mentioned earlier. Are, so are you saying that these inflows are all a risk on sentiment for emerging markets or is it really more of there's a fundamental growth story that investors are really seeing in the Philippines in particular compared to let's say other emerging markets? It's a combination of both. Um, we, we, we strongly believe in the Philippine growth story. The macroeconomic prospects or mm-hmm. growth story is intact. The fundamental corporate uh, earnings growth story uh, is, is strong for the Philippines. But even if you throw, you cast aside all of those fundamental, uh, the fundamental growth story proposition mm-hmm. for the Philippines, the fact that EM equities are, 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 are receiving these huge, massive, these massive inflows in a big way, mm-hmm means Philippine equities will probably trend higher. So this is not at all surprising what's happening right now. So double, not whammy, but the opposite of a double whammy. Actually exactly. Double positive um, yeah. for the all, Philippine all equities. All the negatives from last year are actually tailwinds this year. So Okay, now let's move over to your stock picks. You did look at property space, and I've been looking at this space a lot, particularly because it has been extremely volatile. Um, and most sold off and then most bought back. SM Prime was actually also buoying that up and down. Um, but why are you looking at properties as your pick in we terms think, of sectors? Yes, we like property because we like... Uh, we think the the growth in the residential segment, uh, the rebound in, in the residential segment will continue, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we think that BPO on the on the office side, we think that BPOs are back. Uh, we've seen uh, office space demand for BPOs in uh, two years ago uh, down, and mm-hmm. and we saw a recovery, a rebound last year. And based on our conversations with um, key uh, officers of of, of uh, both uh, on the BPO side and on the property uh, office uh, side, um, we're getting favorable indications that the trend, the rebound from last year from the BPO space will continue. Okay. What happened last year, I think, was that the, the existing um, well, uh, locators who were looking at the Philippines for BPO services mm-hmm. were, were on the fence because of uncertainties on, on train two. Um, whereas those who are already in the Philippines we're actually expanding, and we think that will continue. Uh, and we think that, uh, well, based on the conversation I had yesterday with, okay. with a key officer from the BPO space, it seems like these people who are on the fence are actually starting to expand as much as they can already in the Philippines, alongside okay. those incumbents who are expanding already in the BPO space. So mm-hmm. it's a combination of strong residential and we think a rebound in office demand mm-hmm. anchor our, our favorable view um, on, on property. Aside from the fact that we think... Um, the impact of higher mortgage rates uh, will be um, not that significant um, to, to, to curb demand in, in residential property. Okay, so it will be offset by this growth in the BBO space. Now, your specific sec- uh, stock pick in the property space was Ayala Land. Um, they have also been up and down as of late, also one of the worst performers actually of yesterday's trade. Why so bullish on this Ayala stock? Uh, it's not rocket science. It's a very simple story. It has this uh, very strong brand uh, which um, tells us that it probably will be the, one of the best beneficiaries of, of um, strong growth uh, in, in residential. Um, it also is uh, inexpensive in terms relative to uh, its historical price earnings multiple. Mm-hmm. And it's also inexpensive, uh, actually cheap, relative, relative to its um, net asset value, which we estimated about 60, 62, 63 pesos per share. Okay. Uh, 
Why and it's, it it's a key index cheap, issue as well. June, why is it relatively cheap? I think the appreciation of the brand, the appreciation of the uh, earnings growth, mm -hmm. the visibility, the high visibility of earnings growth. I mean, uh, give me a, a, a blue chip that, that um, pretty much, uh, I wouldn't say guarantee, but mm. pretty much has high visibility for for high mid teens or even 20% mm -hmm. of potential earnings growth. Uh, there's very few. Um, and um, it's, 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 uh, it's just an underappreciation of the market, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the, the growth prospects, mm -hmm. the strong brand equity, and the, uh, uh, the steep discount mm -hmm. to, to intrinsic value. Were you surprised at all at the slump that SM Prime had after uh, you know, this reclamation issue in the Manila Bay project? I mean, were you surprised that markets had already priced in the fact that they would have this project and suddenly that, that you know, got sold off? I mean, is there a risk for that in terms of Ayala or other property developers that the same thing could happen? Um, that's, is, is this regard, with regard to the reclamation? Correct. The Manila Bay project yeah. that uh, is now in limbo. I, I wasn't surprised because if, if uh, the, the reason the stock was running was, was an event Mm -hmm. It was because of an event like the reclamation. Then, if there's news mm -hmm. uh, that that counters that, then uh, I mean the, the the stock will probably go down. Um, with regard to Ayala Land, I'm not. I I don't think so because uh, our investment thesis on Ayala Land is is not based on one event. Okay. It's based on um, several fundamental fundamental merits of the company, a mm -hmm. few of which I. Uh, I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, target price for Ayala trading now opening at 44 pesos 25. That's up or uh, down rather 1% actually. Target price? Oh, um, we have an intrinsic value of uh, so, uh, 52, 53 mm -hmm. pesos per share. Uh, okay. Our net asset value estimate is is north of 62 pesos per share. So we're factoring in uh, a bit of a, a bit of a discount on the uh, net asset value of the company as our intrinsic value okay and now let's move on to the financial space another thing that you know has been looked at uh, very uh, you know very much in deep this past days especially bdo uh, all of this hanjin issues but of course it has said we're not going to be affected too much um, are you buying this story but is it a good time to pick it up right now yes uh, we think that bdo we're not really bothered by the by the Hanjin um, uh, issue. issue because we think it's an isolated event. It does not, in any way, uh, a signal uh, systemic risk in, in the banking sector. Mm -hmm. um, we like BDO, um, okay. and we think it's a good time to buy uh, because of several factors. A few of which are net interest margins uh, should expand. Mm -hmm. um, which should um, help drive earnings growth, uh, loan growth. Uh, this, despite slower loan growth, we think actually slower loan growth is is not a negative because okay. it actually indicates that uh, you know there will be um, margin expansion. I mean that's that's our interpretation, and then you also will see a spike in fee income this year mm -hmm. um, for BDO. And uh, given where markets are in the fixed income space, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some gravy in terms of trading gains, uh, mm. or at least maybe the best way to put it is that trading gains will not be, trading uh, will not be a drag on, on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. uh, could actually be a bit of a boost this year. Um, although, of course, we base our analysis mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, and, and estimates of intrinsic value on uh, core earnings. Um, okay. So bullish on BDO because of margins. Can you say the same thing for the rest of the Hanjin affected banks, um, particularly our? I haven't done enough uh, research on the other, uh, especially the smaller Hanjin affected banks. Okay, so not no no position on that. And finally, one of your stock oh, picks. Sorry, if I, if I may. Please. But as a whole, uh, putting things into perspective, Hanjin the the the, the, the liability the, the potential default. Correct. Is uh, the number I think was met, was was given 412. as four hundred twelve million dollars. Mm -hmm. Putting that into perspective, it's only 0.22 percent of loans in mm -hmm. the banking sector. So, it's it's quite minuscule. Okay. Um, and and we think it's an isolated event. And the banks didn't seem surprised uh, that it that happened. That it happened. Apparently, okay. as early as 2016, there were already indicators, indications, and and I think they have provisioned uh, accordingly. So. Mm -hmm.
So a uh, one-off event, hopefully not a systemic risk to the financial space. Um, finally, your last pick was ICTSI. Again, you know, always on our radar here because it's always the second best performer. Um, what, what's the growth story still, still for you in ICTSI? ICTSI, um, based on uh, the, the, its, its profile of, mm -hmm. of ports in emerging markets, will grow by 29% uh, this wow. year. 29%, yes. okay. Uh, I think some industry experts are, are even forecasting 40% mm -hmm. uh, three-year earnings uh, compounded annual growth for this company. So the growth prospect is here. I think the, um, while, while this is a company that, that has operations outside the Philippines, um, the story for the Philippine stock market this year is that there will be strong investment inflows mm -hmm. and uh, the growth fundamentals are strong. It's okay. about growth. So if it's about growth, those companies we talked about earlier, Ayala Land, mm -hmm. BDO, and ICTSI are best positioned for growth mm -hmm. uh, in the Philippine stock market. So, so where is ICTSI going to be getting this earnings growth? Is, is that because of expansion overseas in specific markets that are you know, developing, let's say, um, or is it more on their, their operations here in the Philippines? It's, so it's, it's more of a uh, uh, ramp up of the ports outside, I, I think. Uh, well, okay. we do have a healthy uh, operation here in the Philippines. Uh, this, at the end of the day, ICT size is an emerging market uh, play. play, which also ties up into the, the exactly. strong story for emerging market equities. Um, so yeah. keep our hopes pinned on the emerging markets there. Thank you so much, Juntar Bago, ETR.